all you fraternity pledges. Hey, 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 hey. I hope you have your pledge pins on because it's time for another head splitting episode of Red Movie Rama. And man, are we going to have a blast with this one because we're covering the 1986 classic horror comedy film, Night of the Creeps. And also, we've got a special guest on the show, and that pretty much means, guys, that I kind of need y'all to kind of just go away for a while. Oh, man. Yeah, that was that was hey, you, you heard the guys. You, you need to all just split. Vamos. We'll take care of it from here. Well, as well, I kind of want you to kind of disappear as well. Now, wait a minute here. I, I thought that we were uh, I thought we were a, a team here. We uh, through thick and thin. Well, we are, but, you know, sometimes I like to have guests, and, and I don't want you to scare them off. Well, it's, excuse me, you worried about me scaring them off, and you're going to watch some crazy movie called Creepy Night of the Dead or whatever? Uh, no, it's it's actually called Night of the Creeps, and it's, it's kind of a classic. Well, it doesn't sound like anything I want to listen to anyway, so I'll just get out of your way, Skippy. Well, I, I appreciate that as well. I, I'll kick it off for you, though. Take it away, Rick. Night of the Creeps is a 1986 horror comedy movie directed by Fred Decker. A couple of fraternity pledges pull a prank with a frozen body and let slug-like creatures loose on the campus. Starring Jill Whitlow as Cynthia the typical girl next door. Jason Lively as Chris. Hey, he's from European Vacation. Steve Marshall as JC. Hey, I could hang out with this guy. Alan Kaser as Brad. Yeah, he's the preppy guy you love to hate. And also starring freaking Tom Atkins as Ray Cameron. Too much coolness for one screen. Back to you, Rick. All right, folks, we're going to jump right into this one, and I want to introduce to you pretty much my long-lost brother. I, I think we were separated at birth, and that's Mr. Joseph Zabigan. Is that right? That's perfect. That That's that's better than I Wow. Said. You're not lying to me, are you? Not even <laughs> remotely. Not even remotely. Perfect. <laughs> we're such good friends, I screw up his last name every time we talk. So Everybody does. <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced. <laughs> this guy is one of those that uh, we started responding to each other's post, and it just seemed like, I mean, it got to so ridiculous. It was like, hey, I like cheese. And he'd be like, I like cheese, too. It's like, well, there you go. Brothers. Cheese is good. <laughs> cheese is great, though. Is it, wait, yes, wait. It we, is. We doing cheese this podcast? I can do cheese. We can, I can do cheese. definitely do some cheese. Okay, this okay. movie. This movie's got plenty of cheese in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plenty of cheese. (laughs) I've got some things wrote down here. I say you're a blogger. uh, You're a reviewer. I said podcaster. But what's this uh, 10 MFH thing? Oh, yeah. That's, um, so that's, that's a friend of mine. So... That goes way back. So there used to be uh, I don't Todd okay. McFarlane Movie Maniacs. I don't know if you're familiar with the Movie Maniac okay. action figures. Absolutely. Back in the day, I used to yeah. be a uh, uh, administrator and a moderator on the official or the not official, but the uh, Movie Maniacs dot net message board. I was bloody thumb. Uh, made friends with a bunch of people there that I'm still friends. Uh, one of my buddies on there, uh, Doug, uh, he runs the uh, 10 Minutes from Hell. Uh, used to do some more with it, used to do some reviews yep. and stuff. It's kind of got one of those things. We're both now, you know, middle aged in, in our 40s. When we started, we were, you know, 20s. So, yeah. you know, it, it all kind of <laughs> slowed down a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Cool. Fun so stuff. So, are you, are you currently doing anything blogger wise or review wise or anything like that? Uh, I still do my blog when I can. Uh, COVID makes it hard. Uh, you know, not very creative, but uh, yeah, yeah, I have a blog. It's called uh, Crap Nobody Wants to Read. Um, I, I have my uh, my faithful <laughs> reader. Uh, his, his name's Steve. He's a really nice guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I just put up. I, I don't consider myself a reviewer because uh, like I used to review movies on the moviemaniacs.net back in the day. And uh 
Yeah. I don't know. I just, it got weird. And so I started to just like, I just like to talk about movies. So I don't really consider myself that I review sure. them. I just sit down and just like blather on like an idiot about whatever movie I feel like talking about it that day. I put up uh, short stories up there. I put up, you know, uh, one of my favorite pieces, reoccurring pieces. Uh, I put up bad teenage Joe poetry. Uh, I will also occasionally put up my uh, uh, bits and pieces of my Friday the 13th fan script. I mean, I was like 22 when I wrote it, and, you know, it's all solid gold. It's all solid gold, every minute of it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, people that uh, just talk about movies, that that sounds familiar. I don't know. You, you may have a long-lost brother or separated birth that kind of does the same thing, because really, I don't know anything about these movies. I just like them. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit familiar. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, it's, it's. I just, I like to talk about that's what it. I like about him. Like to talk about, you know, I don't talk about movies I don't like because that's not fun. Well, sometimes right. that's fun. <laughs> sometimes it's a lot of fun to talk about <laughs> what you don't like, but that's not the case here. But yeah, what we do like is Night of the Creeps, right? Yes. One of the finest movies I think 1986 had to offer in in the horror genre. It's it's a, oh yeah it's a definitely long lost friend for me man this is a movie I can pop on anytime and oh yeah me too yeah never get bored it's it's uh, I don't know man it, it's it's right at the height of the roller coaster horror movie right because it's not full fledged horror yeah it's it's just a kind of a mixed bag of everything you're kind of getting the dark humor of everything that was coming out this time with Reanimator Evil Dead Two this one kind of fits right in yeah. there comfortably with all that stuff and just absolutely love it yes yeah yeah this this one for me I mean this one for me I I'm a little bit younger than you I think I think you're a little older than I am yeah but uh, so I was eleven I'm old <laughs> I was eleven when this one came out and. Uh, one of my favorite things mm. to do, I wish I still had this notebook, but I had a notebook where I would sit down, a movie would start up, I would write down Night of the Creeps, directed by Fred Decker, you know, written by, you know, yeah. starring, but I'd, I'd write down the information in the credits, and then as the movie went on, I'd be like, okay, de mur death one, uh, frat guy, in, you know, <laughs> killed by slug, you know, I'd put up girl killed by, you know, uh, guy with axe, and, and I would sit there and I would watch these movies and I would keep... A, you know, a detailed record of how many people died and what happened to them. And like this one, I remember this one just going crazy and rewinding at the bus sequence so I could count exactly yeah. how many people were on that bus so that I could have an accurate number. And I went into school and I'm on, on the uh, in the lunchroom the next day. Go, no, you got to see Night of the Creeps. Look at how many people died in the bus sequence alone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wish I still had that notebook. What's hilarious is your eleven-year-old self takes better notes than what I've got for this show tonight. <laughs> you know what? I have a notebook. I have a notebook of notes sitting here that I actually wrote almost a year ago, <laughs> and was going to watch. It. We gonna, was going to, you know, do a couple yeah. rewatches. And like, well, you know what? I already have the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, what he's getting to there is we were going to try to do this one on uh, House of Wax when we kind of had it up and running. And we actually recorded an episode talking about this movie, and technical difficulties took over, and it just basically wiped the whole thing out. So we're going to have a bit of deja vu here a little bit. going through this. But, uh, Gremlin got into the it's system. It's going to be uh, <laughs> totally fun, totally fun. So let's let's launch into this thing. So this thing starts off... Like you expect any horror movie from the 80s to start off with an alien spacecraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's one of my favorite things about it. I, it's got like yeah. the movie starts like three times. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like uh, Superman the movie where you just keep changing locations, right? So this <laughs> exactly. one, you start off in a, an alien spacecraft. These little bitty, they're kind of E.T. looking, but a little scarier looking. They do have functional legs, so that's a, that's a win for them. So... I did have a friend watch it with me. It was her first time seeing the movie. She loved it, yeah. so it holds up. And about the aliens, she did point out that the aliens have cute little butts. So oh. take that as Selling you will. The, f the female perspective, the aliens have cute little butts. All right. <laughs> but you got a couple of aliens chasing another alien, and one of them's got this container, right? And they... 
this one is running, and through detail, when you finally get to look, his eyes are a little different from the other aliens. It's kind of a giveaway to what's happening here. But he takes this container, and it jettisons off of the spaceship, just like R2-D2 and C-3PO in the original Star Wars movie. And he just shoots it out into space. And so whatever they were that he was hiding, he's thrown off the off the ship. And then we get a scene where it cuts away to black and white. And some text comes up that says, 1959 Sorority Road. <laughs> so we've gone from space movie to 1950s goody two-shoe time in America, right? Corman University. Yeah, yeah. And we got this guy that's uh, pulling up to, to pick up his date. His name's Johnny. And uh, they go out parking, and while they're parking, they're looking at the, the stars. And uh, a policeman walks up. <laughs> <laughs> Who is uh, this lady's ex-boyfriend. They just split up. But he's out there to warn everybody that, hey, there's some kind of madman on the loose. And y'all probably need to get out of here. But much to his surprise... His lady here is in a, in a car with this other dude, and he's not happy about it, but he just tells them, hey, just get on out of here. While that's going on, a meteor flies overhead, and Johnny, <laughs> the guy that's out with the lady, decides, I'm going to go check this out, like you do yeah, in every Eddie sci-fi would. movie from yeah, the 50s. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Yeah, if I was making out yeah. with, with an attractive <laughs> college girl... At, at, you know, make out points, and I saw a meteor crash, I'd be like, hold up, honey. Hold up. <laughs> yeah. Put this on hold. We have to go look at the brightest star and go look at the meteor. Makes sense. Perfect sense. Yep. <laughs> so he drives out to this location and just parks the car and leaves her in the car because he's being safe, right? I want to yes. keep her safe from whatever Definitely. this thing is. She may get burned by the fire or whatever. <laughs> so he goes out to look at the meteor. She stays in the car, and she happens to turn on the radio, and there's a live report of, warning, there's a crazy man running around with an axe <laughs> that's chopping people up. <laughs> I love that, too, because you, you, they, they, they play with that throughout that entire opening where they start... In, in other news, an escaped mental, and then they turn the station, and they're playing, like, head on my shoulders, turn the station, you know, and every time it comes up, somebody just turns the station to just miss it until we get that perfect point of her sitting in the car. They do the Corbin right. University, so, of course, she turns on the headlights and sees Corbin University. Yep. It's a great scene. Great, yep. great setup. Yep. And needless to say, homicidal maniac sneaks up behind her. And pretty much chops her up with an axe. Yeah, because, you know, you're right exactly where the radio guy said that you didn't need to be. Yeah, Yeah, which, why the cops didn't look where the radio guy said? I don't know. I mean, the the, the radio guy said he was there. Why didn't the cops go there? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. (laughs) I call him as I see him. (laughs) But yeah, while that's happening, Johnny is back where the meteor is. And he leans over, and it's the container is busted open, and a slug basically jumps up out of the thing, goes flying right into his mouth, and that's all we see. And uh, like I said, as soon as this is all over, then it cuts to Pledge Week on the same campus in 1986. So we've jumped to modern time, if you will. Yep. Third opening. <laughs> Where they're playing, they're playing an excessive amount of Wall of Voodoo in this movie too. I don't know if you noticed that, but yep. like every song that's playing is Wall yep. of Voodoo. Well, that's actually something I wanted. I, I did want to bring up as we talked about this because I actually I love the soundtrack to this. The retro yeah, stuff, you know, uh, the stroll, head on your shoulders. That's all excellent stuff. Then they're playing, you know, Blue, you know, Day or whatever it is. Gene Jane Wilden singing there. Yeah, yeah, I was in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Eleven year old Joe's like, "This is my stuff. I'm happy." And then forty five year old Joe's like, "Yeah, good, good, good taste, Joe." <laughs> stick with it. Stick yeah, with stick it. With it. Uh, at this point, we get to meet Chris and JC. Pretty much the people we're going to follow through the rest of this movie. Chris is pretty much a naive young guy trying to make his way in the world, and JC's his buddy, who's uh. Has a little uh, handicap in his life, but he has a big chip on his shoulder, too. He doesn't let it hold him back. Uh, actually, 
actually, he's probably my favorite character in the whole movie. But oh yeah, that's just me. <laughs> definitely, I'm I'm with you there. I I love well, JC. Second favorite well, character. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah, second favorite <laughs> character. Yeah, we can't we can't forget that. <laughs> right. And they're hanging out in, like I said, it's Pledge Week. They're out in front of the Beta's building, or the Beta's house. And Chris sees Cynthia, which is the girl of his dreams. Uh, He's afraid to talk to her. They actually go into the Beta house where she's going in. Chris thinks eventually that the only way that Cynthia will have anything to do with him is if he's in a fraternity. And I mean, that's sound logic. Yeah, it's sound logic. Because, you know... Yeah. It's, it's, he's the guy from, uh, you know, from what, the second vacation movie? Yeah, yeah. European vacation. Yeah, he's from yeah. European vacation. <laughs> he's going to need, yeah, he's going to need a uh, sorority or a frat- fraternity behind him to, you know, For, yeah, to yeah. get in there. He's, yeah. he's, good move on his part. So they decide in order to make this happen, they're going to pledge to the betas. And the president of the betas, uh, who we find out is Brad. The Brad is the, uh, the boyfriend of Cynthia, yeah. And uh, he's, you know, your typical preppy 80s guy. I absolutely love Brad. He is, because, uh, do you remember Mama's Family? The TV show Mama's yeah. Family? He was the, oh. he was the, the, the idiot, essentially, in Mama's Family. And here he just comes Holy out smokes. like somebody tried to clone James Spader and it failed. And then, like, you, you see them sitting there with, like, the groups of, you know, things. And you even have the one guy sitting next to him when they first meet with the cigarette just completely being <laughs> the 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 guy from Animal House, the one preppy from Animal yep. House, and just such, yeah. Yep. Great, great, very stereotypical. Playing it perfectly. I never knew he was the guy on Mama's Family. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Well, see, to me, I always think of... You know, where's his follow-up story? I mean, it's almost like he's Zabka Jr., right? It's almost like they're going to make a movie and say, yeah. no, man, this, this, you know, Chris was being mean to me, and you do the whole flip <laughs> thing, and we get a, a series later on, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. After, the after you know, kicking the crutch out from under JC, I don't know if, he, I don't know if we're going to be able to build him sympathy. It's going to take a, you know, a much better writer than me to do that. Uh, so in order to join the betas, he gives them a challenge they got to fulfill, and... Um, it's not an easy one. They have to go find a corpse and deliver it to one of the other fraternities' front steps and just drop the body off. And uh, there you go. You're you're a you're a beta. I don't know, man. It, it's I don't know. I think I disagree. I think it is pretty easy. It's so easy. It almost does it itself. I mean, it almost does it for them so that they don't have to do it. It's almost like the corpse just gets up and walks away, and all they have to do is run away screaming like banshees. <laughs> there you go folks that's the whole show we don't have to cover anything Boom. else <laughs> that's it have a good day uh <laughs> well it, it's it does give you that thing of okay we're on a college campus where do you find a corpse <laughs> well i mean obviously ricky you go to the uh, cryogenics freezer i mean every college camp has you know a, uh, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't allowed in college, but I'm guessing that, you know, people that were allowed to go to college had, you know, worked at the cryogenics freezer. <laughs> and you and you got to love the fact of this doctor slash scientist guy is typing in his password to get into the office or the cryogenics science lab and uh, can't remember the last number, <laughs> which is zero. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that that star that almost Star Trek quality metal door slide door that they have there that has no business being on on a uh, college campus. It's fantastic. Well, why would cryogenics be on a college campus like this? I mean, <laughs> well, now you're using especially logic. in '86. <laughs> <laughs> and I love before before they even bring out that it's cry- cryogenics. I love when they're looking at the body and they're like, "Look, it's a pop thing," you know. Like, who is it? Walt Disney? Before they even Walt establish, Disney, yeah. they're making the jokes about the Walt Disney being frozen. <laughs> oh, very yeah. clever, very clever yeah. script. So many hidden jokes in this. Yep. Yeah. So they they find the frozen dude, which is Johnny from the beginning of the movie. They've got him locked up in this, I don't know, container. And they decide to, uh, they find the conveniently placed disable button. <laughs> it's even labeled yeah. disabled button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, was, was it disabled or disengaged? Because if it was disabled, it seems Maybe like. it's disengaged. The, okay, good, good, good. Because I was going to say, if Maybe it was disabled, disengaged. the guy using the crutch to hit the disabled button. 
<laughs> like I that's said, that's way that, too clever. That's way too clever, <laughs> even for Fred Decker. Right, disengage. I think that's correct. Yeah, it's just a big red button. Yep. Though. I mean, you can't yep. miss it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's almost like the button in, in the Zarkov ship, yep. right? Before, that he hit, <laughs> that he hits his head on to launch him into space. Yep. Yep. Um, so we now we got this guy that they've broken out of there, and while they're moving him out of the lab, the corpse grabs one of them's arm, and they freak out and take off running like banshees, screaming like screaming banshees. like banshees. It cuts away to where they're taking off running, and then the scientist shows up and sees them running out. He goes in, sees the body laying there, and he leans over the body, and guess what? A slug jumps out of Johnny's body that's been in this thing for 40 years, and it goes right into the scientist's mouth. And then it cuts away and goes to Detective Ray Cameron's dream sequence. Ray Cameron. Tom Atkins has said that this is his favorite role, and he is amazing in this role. He acts yeah. the heck yeah. out of it. That's phenomenal. Uh, this is this is the movie that made me a Tom Atkins oh, fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, this and movie made eleven year old Joe tick his parents off by answering the phone with "Thrill Me." <laughs> and I always yes. answered "Thrill Me," and yeah, my dad. No, you got it. You got say. <laughs> you can't say hello. You can't say "Thrill Me." Okay, whatever. <laughs> Tom Atkins could do it, Dad. I That's can. That's right. I've even got a I've got a Tom Atkins shirt that says "Thrill Me." So I'm, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's nice. awesome. Nice. But yeah, man, this this nice. dream sequence. It, it it turns out that the girl when she was killed was again his his love interest, his first love, and uh, he keeps having these dream sequences of her as she is she's aged, just like he has, like their love relationship never ended. But they do this kind of tribute to Jaws here where she's out in the water and it's all in reverse. She's coming yep. up out of the water nice. and you got the people passing in the bikinis and that's the swipes. I mean, it's, it's dead up Jaws. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Yep. And it's a, yep. it's a freaky dream sequence. And then the phone rings. And like you said, he answers, throw me. <laughs> and he gets the call yep. that something's happened down at the lab. And so he goes down there, and the scientist's body is there, but Johnny's body is nowhere to be found. He starts giving the cops a hard time. Hey, you called me. You said there was two bodies down here. I come down. There's one. The other thing about this is, and we're getting really close to it, but all of their names are names of horror directors. Even the college yep. is named after yep. you know the university. Cynthia Cronenberg. Uh, was was it J.C. Uh, um... You got J.C. Wasn't it J.C. Romero? And the C was Carpenter. No, it's 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 and John Carpenter. Detective Ramey. I've got it. Uh, it's John Carpenter Hooper and Christopher <laughs> John Carpenter Christopher Hooper, that's Romero. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. So all, everybody's named after horror directors, except for one person isn't named after a horror director, and that's in a cameo in an excellent cameo. Not to jump ahead, but in an excellent cameo, we have Dick Miller. Oh yeah. Playing, if you look at his name tag, it says they they call him Walter, and then his nickname or his name tag says W Paisley. Ah. So playing his character from I, Bucket of Blood, yep. the same name. So while it's not exactly, it's still a nice throwback right. to uh to a classic. All the old Corman stuff, yeah. And Dick Miller's amazing. Dick in Miller. it, and that scene is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. So uh, we're at the point to where they're looking for the other body, Johnny's body, and it ends up, it just, you know, <laughs> Cameron even says, well, it didn't just get up and walk away. Well, yes, it did. It it did, Cameron. <laughs> it got up and walked away <laughs> to the sorority, climbed up in front of Cynthia's window, his head split open, and a bunch of slugs come out of it. And uh, they go down into the basement of the house. Of the sorority house. So, a little flash to earlier, there's a, a girl that's there, that's staying there, that's doing some kind of science project that's got, I don't know, a big crate full of brains. <laughs> well, yeah, again, as you would, it's very common for, you know, again, I wasn't allowed for security reasons on college campuses. We won't talk about that for right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, again, as they would, sorority girls carried around boxes full of brains. It's I understand it's it's common. Sure. Granted, everything I know about colleges I got from movies, so I, I may be off. They decided to take those and put them down in the basement because they want them. They don't want them just laying around the house anywhere. Because you know, ooh, brains, ew. 
you know. So, <laughs> and we do get a timely uh, placed cat jump scare here too. Lady hears something at the Gordon. door, and we're thinking it's going to be Johnny's corpse walking up to the door. But she opens the door, and the cat jumps up, and it's Gordon. You know what? And I don't know why. I have no idea why. But ever you watch a movie, and there's just that little thing that just clicks in the back of your mind that just drives you crazy. Yeah. For some reason, when it pays off, her delivery of Gordon, when she's like, Gordon, <laughs> I have no idea why, but it like sets the hair on the back of my head neck standing up, and I'm always like it, whenever it starts, it's like, oh, she's about to say Gordon, and I like get annoyed with it, I have no idea why. I'm watching it again, I'm like, it's really not that bad, why does it bother me so much? Well, cause, and then she said it, I'm like, oh. Because Gordon is not a lovely, fluffy name when you say it. Yeah, no, Gordon. No, it is not. You know, you're supposed to say Gordon's alive, you know, <laughs> not, oh, Gordon, you know. <laughs> nice, nice. That was good. That was good. I saw, I, I heard what you did there. Oh, nice, nice. So, uh, we got a body in front of the sorority house now, and the cops show up, and they're trying to figure out what's happening. The next morning at school, Brad confronts Chris and JC. With probably the best gag that's in this movie with, uh, don't you know the difference between the sorority and the fraternity? And he says, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> yeah, Classic. Yeah. Not cool, bro. Not cool, bro. Not cool. <laughs> uh, and this is the part where they're trying to walk away from him. And they say, look, man, we chickened out. We couldn't even do it. So we don't even know what you're talking about, about this corpse. And uh, when they walk away, then, yeah, Brad trips JC and he falls on the ground. And then... Uh, Cindy gives him the one-fingered salute, and people clap. Very creatively. Yeah. Very creatively. She doesn't just, you know, flip him off. She does the hand up there. She does the it's old the style, crank. you know, <laughs> crank to, to slowly bring it up. Kind of almost, you know, Star-Lord-esque. Yes. If I may say so. Yeah. Maybe he Very can. nice. Very nice. Good job, Cynthia. <laughs> And out of this, uh, some cops are standing there. Or one of the one of the officers is there, and he ends up hauling Chris and JC in. And we get the the fantastic interrogation scene. Yeah, again, where we get the the, the classic line, screaming like banshees, yeah. and what's probably a little bit of an on PC uh, performance sure. by the janitor. Yeah, probably not something that would make it into a movie. But uh, again, it's just like uh, like another ten minute whatever scene of just watching. Watching Tom Atkins over the top just steal every moment and just, but Jason Lively does an amazing job in that scene. Oh, yeah. I think in, the two of them yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. He doesn't try to meet, you know, Tom Atkins level. He just kind of keeps it, you know, low. Yeah. I love that whole scene with the the back and forth with the JC trying to come up with a story. No, we didn't do it. And then Chris is just like, we did it. We totally did it. He's lying. He's lying. We did it. <laughs> yeah. It's so great. Yeah. And again, like you said, the, the yeah. screaming like Banshee guy. I mean, he's the janitor and, and he keeps saying it over and over and uh so they end up cutting them loose and it goes to a scene of the janitor at one point where he's actually just cleaning whatever and he's still saying screaming like banshee and then all of a sudden still chuckling to himself the scientist from earlier is on an autopsy table which i love i love this scene yes that's a great scene because he just he plops up just, I mean, straight up, and he's been sewn open, and the scissors and everything are still attached to where they've done this, the sewing and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, he gets off the table, toe tag and everything, and he's walking down the hallway, and a cop passes him and doesn't even look at him, just says, see you tomorrow. Doesn't even look up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I also love that, like, the... the, um, the uh coroner's stand there you know he, he he jumps and he turns and looks nothing's happening and then he t- goes back to his thing and then when he actually sits up and walks away coroner doesn't even move not even phase just ignores it lets it go which actually brings me to something else i wanted to talk about with this yeah. so here's one of the things i want to do someday i want to write a book about the history of coroners eating in movies oh yes yes 
I mean, because again, we have the classic, the first time you see him, he's sitting over the body, shoving a sandwich. Every single time you see that corner, he's just doing the old cliche. And I just, I want to know where that came from. I want to know when we started doing that. Yeah. I want to know the first place. I, I'm just, I'm fascinated by it. It kind of steps no back to want, but I'm a lot of the Giallo it. films, the, the Italian movies, instead of it being the corner, yes. it's always the detective. The detective is, in most cases, yes. eating something all yes. the time. So I don't know if it's yep. some kind of yep. carryover from, from just those movies or what but you're right man all through this decade yeah. corners are, are yeah. eating maybe food. i'm overreaching by saying a book maybe more of a pamphlet but you know <laughs> i want to research it someday that's awesome it'll happen that's great <laughs> uh, but yeah he he uh he's walking down the hall and he runs into the janitor and the janitor screams and it cuts away so you're thinking okay it got him too uh may I ask a question yeah when that janitor screams, would you say he <laughs> screams like a banshee? Well, not really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not. Nah, yeah, probably not. That's a stupid question. Not banshee-ish. Not, not banshee-ish <laughs> at all. So uh, it's just kind of a... <gasps> no, not even remotely. <laughs> um, from here, we go to um, Cynthia showing up. At the guy's dorm room and wants to go out and take a walk. And, uh, of course, Jason Lively's character is super nervous around her, but they decide to go out and walk. JC's with them. And then at some point, JC says, look, you guys, you know, this is going a good direction for two people. Three's a crowd. So I'm going to head on to the little boy's room. So he goes to f- JC being an amazing wingman. Yeah. Doing everything right. Hooking making sure his bud. Yeah. Yeah. We all need a JC in yeah. our lives. Which there's a great scene we kind of pass through here, too, as well, because the scene after they get back from finding the corpse and all that, where they have a little dispute back and forth, and JC even lays out, look, man, I do everything for you. You know, you were trying yep. to find this girl, your heart broken. You think the only way she's going to get with you is if we join a fraternity? Let's, let's join a fraternity, you know? So he's very, hey, whatever benefits you, because I'm not going to get anything out of this deal, but I want you to be happy. So they have that kind of relationship. And again, the one you know, you watch some of these these eighties movies and, and the people aren't natural, the people don't really connect well. Yeah. But like you watch this and like you buy that that Chris and JC are friends. Yeah. You buy that like Chris and Cynthia are friends. Right. It's completely believable. They all play off each other so well. Yeah. So that that's definitely one of the things that I love about this movie is just it, it does feel like you're watching a bunch of friends. Yeah. And even though that kind of comes to a screeching halt at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because JC goes to the bathroom and while he's in the stall, even though it's got probably my favorite thing in the whole movie where it says striper rules behind his head on the wall. <laughs> Cause yep. Yep. And if. If I'm, I may be wrong, but doesn't it say Striper rules? Because didn't Decker like direct yeah. a Striper video or something I, like something that? Something to that degree. And I think some people that were working on the set were evil, either people that was working with them, or there's something to that connection where yeah. they were all involved. Yeah, there's something with that connection. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, you'd think I would have looked that up before <laughs> just blurting it out here. But hey, you know, this is my first time. Give me a break. Yeah, no worries. Get off it. my back. You can look it up yourself. Not you. You're doing, you're not on my back. I'm talking to the, to the listeners. Get off my back. <laughs> Google it if you want to know so badly. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, we have another reference in there, though. We have another reference a moment later to Decker's next movie yep. when we see on the other wall, you know, go Monster Squad. Monster Squad. So Yeah. Yeah. Which we may have to return and do that one, too. <laughs> oh, such a good movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. So JC's taking care of business, and all of a sudden he hears something, and he opens up the stall door, and laying on the ground in front of him is the split-open head of the janitor. And a bunch of these slugs had come out of it. And it's full-on panic time now because, you know, we don't want JC to die. <laughs> no, no. But he finds out something very, very no. important to the rest of the story is the fact of, and I don't know why he's lighting a book of matches. I don't know if he just stunk the place up that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've always wondered that watching that scene because he's like he, he he establishes he knows the slugs are there. What am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to light matches and throw it at the ground and see what happens. Just, just 
Yeah. Just, you know, fortunate that the first thing he tried happened to be the <laughs> right thing. To work. I mean, if he had had a water bottle on him and poured some water there, the whole movie would have gone completely That's true. Different. But no, he had he had, had matches, matches, and so history was made. Yep, he lit the whole back book of matches, holds it under the door, and one of those slugs come by and hits it, and it just like totally disintegrates right there on the spot. So we find out that fire destroys them, uh, but he's just not man enough to make it out on his own because one gets up his leg in his pant leg, and it starts crawling up him, and he's trying to get away, and he falls down. And here comes one straight for his mouth. And just like all the other scenes where this kind of happens, you just kind of get a cutaway. But it don't look like it ends well for him. And you know what? It doesn't end well for him, but you can't blame him. I mean, you got to – I have two working legs. I can walk fairly yeah. well. If one of those suckers jumped up my pant leg, yeah, I, I'd go face first into the bathroom floor Probably. as well. So, you know, yeah, yeah I'd face first in the bath. I'd be crying, though. So he's one <laughs> up on me because I'd be crying. He didn't cry yet. He cried a little bit later, but that's understandable. I'm just going to say this in passing, but I think JC looks a whole lot like the girl that's in just one of the guys when she has her hair cut short. <laughs> They look almost identical, and I'm not. I mean, the hair is one thing, but the facial features, and the way they say things, and the way their eyes move when they talk, a lot of similarities, man. Okay, so my crush on the girl from um, uh, just one of the guys yeah. had already created all sorts of weird feelings sure. that I wasn't, you know, <laughs> that I was working with, and now you've just kind of made it even muddier. <laughs> It's secretly JC. It's JC with boobs. Yeah, it's secretly JC. <laughs> JC with boobs. <laughs> oh. Well, there you go. I figured I'd mess that up for you. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it worked well. Good job. So, <laughs> so back to uh, Chris having his time with uh, walking around with Cindy, and she's telling him all this crazy stuff of what she thinks going on. And uh, we don't know it, but he ends up walking her back to the to the sorority. And when he's leaving, he's being trailed by Cameron, uh, the detective. And they end up, for some reason, like you do, you just end up going over to the detective's yeah. house and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After a great, you know, great little, you know, tete-a-tete between the two of them with the, you know, creepy crawlies, a date for the formal. Yeah. That's a great, I love that little exchange. Every, well, every exchange between them is good. Yeah. That one's a great one, too. Yeah, the fact that he's on cloud nine because she invited him to actually go on a date with him or with her. Yeah. And then he turns around and <laughs> there's Tom Atkins smoking a cigarette going, hey, Spanky, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> I love that he calls him Spanky and Alpha Alpha because really, Spanky and Alpha that's Alpha. the way you hear him referred to pretty much the rest of the movie. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, and I mean later on, Chris even yeah. refers to him refers to them as spank, himself as Spanky and Alfalfa. Right. So uh, they go back to Cameron's house, and uh, he Cameron starts talking about his past. And one of the craziest oh, scenes. So I absolutely good. love this scene, man, because he's even Me like. Too. <laughs> He talks about Chris, they are both so good. Yeah, Chris is so uncomfortable, <laughs> and Tom Atkins he has tears in his eyes as he's delivering this speech. Yep. It's so good. He's burying his soul about the night that his woman was dead, and he he ended up uh, getting revenge on this maniac that was running around. But he talks about he asked he asked Jason Lively about so. Did you have a girlfriend before? Yeah, she kind of broke my heart and decided we shouldn't see each other again. He said, yeah, I had a girlfriend once, too. She decided we shouldn't see each other anymore, either. Then I found her in the car and on the ground over in the woods. <laughs> I found her on the ground in the car in the woods. <laughs> your your girlfriend went on to, to marry and have kids. My girlfriend was, was cut up into pieces. <laughs> Or however that line goes. Yeah, and it just gets darker and darker. He's like, I mean, that, that's oh. that's where it kicks off, and then it just keeps getting darker from there. <laughs> yeah. To the point, he says, "You know what happened Why next? Are you, telling me this? <laughs> you know what happened next, Spanky? Or should you be telling me this? Close. I leveled off that shotgun at his chest. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's fantastic. That's I love that line too. I love that line too. Should you be telling me this? Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it's like he's not even listening. He's in his own world. He's just oh. <laughs> just uh, you know, admitting to a 25-year-old murder. Yeah. And the thing is is he confesses not only to the murder but he buried him behind the sorority house, which is now where the house mother's cottage is. And uh yep. Instantly. I mean Right out of him saying that, it cuts to the house mother's cottage. She's sitting there watching Plan 9 from Outer Space. and uh, Second Plan 9 from Outer Space reference in the movie. Earlier in the beginning when um, uh, the first girl leaves to go to uh, on her date, the one of the two peoples that they walk by is sitting there going, Oh, did you see Plan 9? <laughs> and then they cut. Uh, so second Plan 9 reference wow. in the movie. But yeah, she's sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden, up through the the ground of the the or the floor of the house, <laughs> bonk, comes the uh, bonk, the bonk. maniac with an axe. It, it's I'm like, why would he bury him with the axe? I mean, <laughs> if you shot this guy, and it was a it, there was blood on it too. He, he didn't even clean it off. He just you know left the axe with oh, him. Oh man. Yeah, I wondered that too. Why? But you know, in his defense, Detective Cameron is not. The most, you know, even yeah, keel guy. That's true. Very true. He, he may be a couple of, you and know, he was a he, he was a rookie a at this bit. point too, so he didn't think things yeah, through. Yeah, he didn't think yeah. about, hey, what if this body comes back alive? He'll have a way to bust up out of a floor if he's got an axe, or if he doesn't, <laughs> then he'll just be under the house for a long time. <laughs> I mean, really, who could see that coming? You know, if if he could see that coming, yeah, that that would be a little, uh, yeah. So you, you got to forgive, right? But yeah, now the house mother's been chopped up to bits. And again, Cameron gets the phone call. You need to come out here. So he grabs his shotgun, takes off, shows up at the house. And, uh, yeah, the the coroner is saying again while he's eating a sandwich or something. Yep. <laughs> if we had to put, if we put a, one body piece in each bag, we'd be here all night. <laughs> And I love that he's saying that. There's like <laughs> all these college girls yeah. just crowded around them, and the coroner is just flippant about their dead house mother <laughs> that was just chopped up with an axe, and pff, who cares? Uh, but yeah, he's looking for the body, and the body's nowhere to be found. Then you got an APB going on. Cops are running around everywhere looking for somebody with an axe, and they finally find him. But there's there's a there's a great scene where the cops are in the car and they're patrolling. And one of them stops because they so see good. something, and that skeleton person or whatever this maniac yep. comes up. Which at this point, he kind of looks like Eddie off the cover of some of the Iron Maiden album covers. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Oh, definitely. He's just a skull yeah, that with with a mullet and, yeah, that, and a hatchet. <laughs> that's something about this movie too that I, I think it's 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 easy to forget. The, how good the effects are, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, because that's, it's a great looking zombie. It's a great looking zombie. You see, like, some of the stuff with people's faces half gone. Right. You know, it's really, really good effects in here. Even the slugs themselves yep. are so well done. I'm not going to say you never see the strings. There's some moments sure. where you definitely see the strings, but usually it's, it's really well done. Yeah. Really impressive work on the, I didn't look up to see who did the effects, but. But whoever did it, you know, kudos to you. Good job. Yeah, I totally. Ag- I know t- you're listening. Totally agree, man. I mean, I, I think that, that that they still hold up, and it, it holds up in this in this '80s frame of what we're looking at. So yeah, you don't look at yeah. it and go, "Oh, that looked really crappy." I mean, it it, it holds up yeah. to the time, and yeah. it's it's enjoyable. Uh, exactly, exactly. They're they're very good. Yeah, yeah, very fun. But they end up cornering this guy or this body in a dead end street. Cameron shows up with his shotgun. I've already killed you once, you know. So we kind of get that thing. Cops are unloading on this guy, and bullets aren't really doing anything. For some reason, his body's glowing. There's li- <laughs> shafts of light coming out of his body for no reason. Well, that's... They're just coming out of the back. When we see him from the front, they're not there. So well, you got to remember. Yeah, this, I don't know what that's This is all around about. the time of Rambo three, and in Rambo three, he blows that big hole in the, in his side, and he cauterizes it. And you can see daylight through him. So it was just the going trend <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Yeah, nice, nice. Oh, Rambo three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and then uh, Cameron blows his head off with the shotgun, and 
a ton of these slugs come out, and all the cops are just standing, which I think is kind of odd, because now there's, I don't know, 15 cops standing around, all with their mouths open, shocked at what they just saw, and no, no slugs are jumping in them. I thought that, yeah. that, that yeah. could have been a good opportunity, but, you know, it's in hindsight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, I like to think that every single one of those cops called off the next day, that they were all like, <laughs> you know what? A, a good pension, good pay, but you know what? I'm, I, I need a new career. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> oh, but we're in luck because the very next day is the day of the dance, and we get an 80s montage that is a 100% <laughs> pure 80s montage. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes and and it's like i said it's the scene because everybody's getting on the bus during that scene oh, yeah. two things about this it's the scene when i was a kid that i just kept re- uh, rewinding over and over and over again to count exactly how many people were on that bus to get a uh, uh accurate number and i also want to bring up one of my favorite side because all the side characters yes. too like like what was it steve, steve with the and- unibrow <laughs> at the beginning are all so good and i absolutely love the guy taking attendance yeah. <laughs> on the bus he is loving every minute of it he's so it's like, yeah steve steve's, steve's here, steve's here. Right. he is like yeah yeah and he is just loving taking attendance you know if things had gone on differently he was going to become like an accountant yeah. he was going to work for the irs or something and just enjoy just bookkeeping he had a long you know line of bookkeeping in front of him and it just it didn't work out because of the yep. because of the den mother's dog it's all because of what he said. We're going to get done, dude. Yep. <laughs> We're going to get done, dude. <laughs> so I was probably rewinding this part of the movie, too, but it was probably to catch all the the brief nudity that leads into that as well, because I was 16 when this came out, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. There was that that nudity, but uh, again, just to show where my mind's at, I was like, "Oh, that's nice," but no. Oh, how, how many people are on that bus? I need to. Okay, wait, wait. Oh no, there's somebody behind that person. Need to. Yeah. And you, and you priorities. You kind of said it too, man. This dog, this dog is kind of like yeah. the reason for the whole last half of the movie. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Not only does it turn somebody more significant in the movie into a zombie, but it makes that whole bus crash. It's got all these guys dressed up in tuxedos who are already (laughs) half-blitzed. The dog runs out in front of it. This dog has already got a slug in it, or many slugs. Uh, It walks up to Brad, and he's at the sorority. He's going to go apologize. I guess he's apologizing. He's going to go talk to Cynthia and try to fix things. Whatever he's doing. Because, you know, they have totally split. And he sees the dog, and the dog uh, gives him a slug. <laughs> and I remember... Sloop right into his yeah, mouth. I remember showing this to my niece. And it's one of those moments where you're already starting to put the, the dots together, right? And she says, if they end up killing this yep. dog at the end of the movie... I'm going to be mad. I'm like, it's already dead. <laughs> She's like, yeah, no! It's, I, I hate to tell you this. I hate to give you the bad news. Yeah, but. The dog's already dead. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, depending on which ending you watch, the dog kind of makes it. True. True. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. We'll talk about that for sure. Because that's... We will de- that's definitely... We definitely need to talk about yeah. that. So, uh... uh do we go back to well, the dog runs out in front of the bus while <laughs> while Brad yeah. has been now become a zombie? He goes to talk to Cynthia at the sorority, knocks on the door. <laughs> I guess he knocks on the door. <laughs> Haven't figured that one out yet either. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, the girl from Return of the Living Dead is at the door. S- Suzanne Snyder yeah. opens the door and says, "Oh, hi, Brad." <laughs> Cynthia! I'm sure. I'm so I'm sure. sure. Yeah, because she, th- she thinks he's like got makeup on or something like he's lo- supposed to look like a zombie. And the fact that Cynthia comes downstairs, grabs Brad by the hand, never looks at him, sits down on the yeah, steps. I love that she never oh, looks yeah. at him. They sit down and have this long conversation. She's just spilling her heart about how it's just over. And he's back there behind her incubating. <laughs> 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 and these slugs are just popping out of his mouth and yep. landing on the ground in front of her. 
It's hilarious. Completely oblivious, not even seeing it, not even seeing it. I love like the first. I said, yeah, I, like I said earlier, you don't always not see the strings, and like the first time you see it, you completely see the string coming oh, yeah. down his face being used to pull it out. <laughs> Great, great, and stuff. the fact that half the time it's not even his head, you know, it's a, it's a, you can tell it's a fake yeah, head, so that's yeah. that makes it fun yeah. too. But uh, yes, leading definitely. up to this, we kind of left out something important: is where JC has left a message for Chris. Chris can't find JC anywhere, and JC has recorded on his Walkman <laughs> a message <laughs> about what's happened to him, about how he's changing and he can walk, but it's not a good thing. I tell you what, the message. Is very bothersome, and I get yeah. it goes back to you. Have, you have gone hook, line, and sinker for these characters. You really like these characters, yeah. so when he's delivering this on this yes. cassette, you're heartbroken. You know? Oh yeah. So oh yeah. You you already know he's gone. Yeah. You already know it does not end well for him. Right. And having this callback, it's like, oh yeah, that's a hard scene. So he ends up. It's a hard scene. JC says that. You know, he he feels like he's dead. He doesn't have a, a heartbeat or a pulse. And he went down to the boiler room because he knows that heat will kill these things. And Chris goes down to the boiler room and finds his body laying there. And you can see where several of these slugs have come out of him and they've all disintegrated. So the heat, he, he did himself a service by going down there and not only doing himself in, but the rest of them too. So, yep, yep. And because of that, yep. Chris goes back to Detective Cameron's house, <laughs> who at this point has totally <laughs> they flipped his Alfalfa. lid. Totally flipped his lid. He's taped up the door. He's got the gas on on his stove. <laughs> that's that's one of my favorite. I, I, I'm gonna. I say that a lot with this movie. That's one of my favorite things. But I love that scene, and that that's one of my favorite things with Fred Decker. Yeah. That like he puts like if you're not paying attention, you don't realize that he was about to kill himself. Yeah. You know, at first when he's pulling the tape off, you're like, why is he pulling the tape off? And then it's like two, they yeah. do a cut and a cut and a cut. And it's like two scenes later that they pay off the gas. And if you're not paying attention, <laughs> you have no idea that's happening. And if you then his next movie, Monster Squad, you pay attention to that one where the mom and dad are constantly like quab- uh, squabbling back and forth. There's a scene in that where the mom comes down the steps and she's packed up all her stuff. Yeah. And she's leaving him. It's not mentioned in the movie. It's not a plot point. Just like this, it's not a plot point. It's just like this casual, realistic darkness just worked yeah. in to the storyline in the background just to make the the movie all the more real. Well, uh, I wish we had gotten more out of Fred Decker. I wish these yeah, movies had done Absolutely. Better. I totally agree. That's, that's one of those things you're just like, what, you know, why why stop when, when you were making such great stuff? Yeah. But yeah, I think, you, you know, Cameron has just relived his worst nightmare. This is the thing that he can't get out of his mind, and now he had to do it again. Kill the same guy again. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's ready to uh, bon voyage. He's ready to leave this planet. And uh, luckily, Chris knocks on the door, and at first he tries to ignore the door knocks. Then he ends up getting up, like you said, peeling the tape off the doors that's been sealed off. Angrily peeling <laughs> like, the tape off. What do you off? want? <laughs> and that's when he says, they got Alpha Alpha. So he knows right then that, and he starts telling him about what he heard on the tape where he says the, the slugs get in you and they, they lay eggs in your brain and that's how they regenerate. So at this point, they decide to go to the sorority house because they know all this is falling apart. That's it all kind of... After picking up a flamethrower with frame. the Dick uh, Miller yeah, they, cam- cameo. Which is so great. So great, man. Go back and watch it just for the Dick Miller yeah. scene. Yeah, him and Tom Atkins together, man. Yeah. Oh, if you got the permission slip, just, uh, just hand me the, the permission slip there. Yeah, you see. Uh, as, he's, as he's casually <laughs> playing with the shotgun <laughs> shell and casually yeah. loading up the see, shotgun. See, that's, uh, that's the problem <laughs> there, Miller. Walt. Uh, I don't yep. have one. <laughs> oh, that. that uh, the Dick Miller doing such a good job with his nervous, you know. <laughs> oh, Dick Miller knows he's screwed. <laughs> yeah. He knows he needs to. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Yes. But uh, they end up getting back to the sorority just in time when Brad is about to have his head exploded and attack Cynthia. 
And they end up uh, shooting Brad in the head and uh, setting his head on fire. <laughs> like you do. Yeah. That, like you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes sense. That's what you, that's, you know, not to be that guy, but that's kind of what we need to do with the Brad Street right. of the world. So, what does he tell him? <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Don't take it personal or something. What does he say to Yeah, something yeah. like that. Don't take it personal. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and then, <laughs> then we cut back to the actual bus that's been crashed. Yes. Where you were probably keeping score here, right? Yes, yes. As it, when I'm sitting with my notebook, I remember tossing my notebook going, well, now they're coming back to life. Do I count them? <laughs> do I, you know, do I count them twice? Because, like, you know, technically, you know, do, do zombies count? And so I had this whole, like, I had to pause the movie to have this whole moral, you know, discussion with myself as to whether or not zombies counted as human life and whether or not to count them twice. Yeah. And ultimately, I put a little asterisk next to uh, Night, uh, Night of the Creeps at the top, and then I put added a uh, second column just for zombie deaths <laughs> wow <laughs> and yeah, i'm going yeah yeah hey, i got to almost see i don't know four sets of boobs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'm sitting here making notes on zombie deaths and you're sitting there five years older than me going boobies <laughs> oh but yeah so the best crashes and then you get all these guys that are all bloody from head to toe and tuxedos Roaming down the street, yep. coming straight for the sorority, and we get the iconic yep. Tom Atkins line. The classic line. Well, I got good news yep. and bad news, ladies. Good news, your dates are here. Bad news, they're dead. They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, So good. Yeah. And at this point, it's just so a good. throwdown, man. This is such yep. a payoff, man. Zombies everywhere. You've got... Cynthia and Chris out front kicking butt. She's joined the fight now. And Chris is shooting yeah, them she, in the head, and she's using the flamethrower to burn them out. And then you got Tom Atkins in the house trying to defend the ladies in there. Uh, we forgot that yep. Gordon, the second Gordon, pops in before yep, this. Yep. Where he's. Gordon. And he's, and he's just a <laughs> skeleton cat at this point with worms yep. all over yep. his face. But. Uh, <laughs> You start having zombies busting into the sorority from the back window where where yeah. Detective is. And when I met Tom Atkins, I got him to sign a picture, and I got him to write, it's Miller time. I mean. <laughs> nice. Nice. Mine, uh, I, I had... Uh... I had a quandary. I never ask them to write anything particular. There's only been two times where I've asked for anything particular, but I never ask for anything particular. Yeah. And I'm up there and I'm like, I can't decide between just the classic thrill right. me or I've got good news and yeah. bad news. Yeah. I, I couldn't decide which one I wanted. And uh, he knew his audience well enough to go to Joe, thrill right. me, Tom Atkins. Yeah. So. yeah, I just, you know, uh, to me, that line that the it's Miller time is just so left field. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who would who in the right man would? I'm fighting a zombie. <laughs> I've I've shot him, and now I'm getting a, a can of hairspray and my cigarette, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> it's Miller time. <laughs> I'm gonna light you up. <laughs> yes, yeah, pay off the the cigarette that's been dangling from his mouth the entire oh. movie. Yeah, and we get yeah. we get some great Good payoff to everything. Some great fight scenes outside. We got where they get in the the little shed and they get locked up in there. Yep. And zombies busting through it. Good plan. Yeah, <laughs> you got to. Uh, it's the lawnmower where we killed uni, Unibrow yeah. guy. Ah, uh, uh, what was the line? That was that very. Uh, I don't remember the line there when he did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I don't remember the line, but it was one of those really sorry, you know, dude. cheap 80s <laughs> yeah, lines. Sorry, dude. Like, sorry, something, dude, yeah. or something like that, yeah. Oh. Well, that's one of my favorite things about just that carnage there at the end is, like, you, you just watch Tom Atkins just being a badass. Yeah. Like, there's the one scene where he just catches the slug with his hand, yeah. you know, spinning around shooting everybody. It's just like yeah. it's just like 15 minutes of him just being a badass. Awesome. But at the same time, you have Chris and Cynthia out there, and, like, he ha like one again, another one of my favorite lines, he hands her the, the shotgun first and goes, here, take this. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> and she kind of hugs it. She kind of, like, wraps it around and kind of, like, rubs her face on it. Like, And then from that point on... 
she is so natural yeah. with the shotgun because a lot of times you'll see these people in these movies and they look like you know they're they're going to break their arm if they actually shoot right. it but you know she just seemed so natural with that shotgun like you know okay yeah i'm in this i know what i'm doing and like just all three of them just kicked into yeah. just you know badass ass S- sur- survival so mode yeah and they're, yeah. they're holding their yeah. own out there man i mean they they get in a couple yeah, of tight spots but they end up working out of it and then uh that's at the point where chris notices that the slugs when they bust out of these zombies heads are going right back down to the basement and he goes okay what's down there and that's when you put together, oh, that's where they stored all those brains. So they go in the house, get all the, the ladies out of there, tell them, get out, get out of the house, get out of the house now. And uh, they go down to the basement, and they're looking around. And then they see, over in the corner, Tom well, they see Tom Atkins for sure. And he's got, oh, yep. he's got tape First. over his mouth yep. and a... Uh, gallon or two gallons of gasoline in his hands <laughs> convenient very convenient yeah. that that gasoline was down sure. there right near that big pile of rags <laughs> that you know everybody keeps in their basement i know i always keep piles of rags i mean that's probably why i'm in apartments now because you know right. the house always kept the uh, gas next to the pile of rags <laughs> and over in the opposite corner is about a thousand slugs just slithering all <laughs> over each other and so what Tom Atkins is doing is he's got tape over his mouth so he can't be, mm, what's the word, infiltrated. <laughs> infiltrated, that works, infiltrated. Uh, zombified. zombified. And he's taking the gasoline taking and he starts spa- splashing the gas everywhere and he takes the tape off his mouth and he starts counting down. So he's telling Spanky and Cynthia they need to get out of there because he's about to blow this place up. So they take off running. They're doing the countdown as they're running out. He's splashing the... And neither of their countdowns even oh, remotely Oh, yeah, not match. even close. Yeah. They are not even close. There's no continuity between them. Yeah. It's, it's like they don't even match themselves. Well, he gets, they do a horrible job. Well, Chris gets faster as it goes towards the end, too. So yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. But anyways, they make it outside, and that's where you get, again, another slugs. There's a, several of them that are like going to fly at him and get to him. Uh, get to the detective but when jason or when jason when chris counts down to zero and says detective thrill me the whole sorority just goes up in a ball of flames boom killing all of the slugs all of them maybe (laughs) yeah maybe maybe so it's all over they have that nice moment. They, you know, the eye contact. The two of them finally kiss. Yeah, even though all of her personal belongings that she's had all of her life is just now burning up, and there's probably some ladies that were probably passed out in the back room somewhere. It's probably burned up a lot. But hey, yeah, yeah. But you know, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what you gonna love, do? You can't. You can't. Love you conquers can't all. Grieve forever. <laughs> yeah, you can only grieve for so long. You can't expect them to worry about that forever. <laughs> But we get the, 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 the scene here where they they finally uh, embrace. And uh, according to what version you watch, this is yes. where we have two different endings. Yes. Uh, the one that I grew up seeing, they're kissing, and they see the little dog coming up. They bend over to look at the dog, and a slug comes out of the mouth, and then we get a cutaway to black, and that's the way the movie ends. Yes. It it's interesting, like like you said, that's the one you you grew up seeing, and, and that's a, definitely the one I remember seeing. But this is like one of the first movies that I remember being conscious of the fact that there was an alternate ending. Ah. Oh. So I, I know I saw it somewhere before it came out on DVD because I already knew what that ending was, huh. and I had already seen the stuff. So I know it had, it had come with. So like this was like I said, this is like one of the first movies that I was like aware that there were different endings. Huh. And uh, yeah, I have no idea where I saw that, but you know, I, I did see it somewhere. And I was actually when uh, I like I said I watched it last night with a friend, showing it to her for the first time. And again, she loved it, had a lot of fun. And uh, it's, I was trying to remember where I saw it for the first time because I know it wasn't that DVD. But uh, yeah, I was definitely aware of the alternate ending, and the alternate ending I remember is different 
than the alternate ending that's in the um, theatrical or the uh, director's cut. Oh, really? Because uh, yeah, because the director's cut, as I'm sure you were just about to explain, yep. the director's cut they kind of embrace the. Uh, quality of video gets really really bad yeah. you cut to detective cameron walking down the street <laughs> with the slug yep. all burnt up and thing he falls his head explodes slugs everywhere yep. they go up under the fence and then you just see this adorable you know fake cemetery yep. that looks like it was made for a 12 year olds you know model train and you know the alien ship flying over <laughs> it looking for it and then as it disappears the stroll starts i remember seeing it without seeing tom atkins that makes sense i remember seeing it without tom atkins there where you just see it and then you see the slugs i want to say i remember the slugs coming from the dog but well, i could be completely wrong on it, that. you know it, it and that would totally make sense to me you know because then you're back down to possibly one slug, right? Yeah. Whereas, like yeah. you said, with Atkins, you've got you know, several that come out or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, the fact that it's the cemetery, so you're saying, oh, man, yeah. this could be really Return yeah. of the Living Dead. You yeah. Know? yeah. Or, you know. Which ending do you prefer? I, I still like it with the dog coming up and you get the slug coming out and it just ends. I, I, I still prefer that one. I guess because it's that thing of, it's the first one I saw. Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually like the. Um, I think I actually like. I don't like that Detective Cameron is turned. Right. I, w- I want him to have just right. died. I don't want him to have been turned. But uh, I, I think I like that ending better because you know we get the cemetery and then the spaceship. Yeah. I like the tying back into the spaceship at the end of the first at the, or at the beginning of the movie. Yep. Ending with the beginning, I like bringing that all together. But I do love the dog, even though it hints that you know Jill Whitlow got turned. Sure. And I don't think I like that. Well. Well, to me, to me, it kind of lifted open to a uh, sequel, right? You know, yeah. you could, yeah. you could easily have this run on and on, and that was another thing of the of trend of the time too. Man, is always leave it open because yeah. you never know. So, oh yeah, you know that's the reason we get yeah. Bride of Reanimator and Beyond yeah. Reanimator and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. those we could have probably done without. But anyways. Um, yeah, well, you know what? Beyond Reanimator gave us, you know, one of the best songs <laughs> ever in horror movie history yeah. in Shake Your Dead Bones. Uh, you got to reanimate those feet. I'm not going to count. The, I'm not going to tell you the amount of times I've driven home from work at two o'clock in the morning when, you know, we could actually leave the house to go to things like work with my radio blaring singing Dr. Reanimator at the top of my lungs. <laughs> Happened way too many times for me to count. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, man. This this movie to me is just I don't I don't see how you can call yourself a horror fan and you haven't seen this one. You, it may not be one that you like because yeah. horror is a lot of different things to people, right? Uh, yeah. This one to me, this is a gateway horror movie, right? This is one that you definitely, can definitely. let eleven year olds and teenagers watch yeah. and they actually get a kick out of it and. Uh, yeah, it's not too scary, but it's got enough stuff in it to make you go, Ugh, you know. Yeah, and it's got a nice mix of comedy without being it's funny, but it's not a horror comedy. Right. So it it, it yeah does that line really well, which again, so does Monster Squad, yes. which again I think is the the strength of Fred Decker. Yep. Yep. And just the brilliance of sci-fi to the sci-fi 50s movies to moving it up to yes. the 80s which all that stuff goes hand in hand anyways because i remember growing up yeah going to school we would actually still have sock hops right where they played all the old 50s tunes and you dressed up in 50s nice. regalia and and it's it's amazing how those trends you know yeah the 80s was fat, infatuated with the 50s as weird as that is yes yeah. yes yeah, and now we're infatuated with the 80s. Yes. Yeah. It, because and 90s. It's, it's that parent. I guess we're moving to the, to the yeah. 90s it's now. It's that yeah. parent thing, right? So whatever your parents was into yeah. kind of becomes part of what you're influenced by. Yep. And that's just how that thing yep, keeps definitely. rolling. Yep. Well, dude, I, nice. I, nice. I don't really have a rating system or anything for this. I just think this is a highly recommended thing. This is really high on my list of movies that I would share with people. So you got any final words you want to say about this one, man? You know what, like you said, this is, you know, 
It's just a classic. I was lucky enough, this time last year, as a matter of fact, one of my last cons I was able to go to before the world shut down, I got to meet uh, Jill Whitlow and Jason cool. Lively. And it was a small con, so there wasn't a lot of people there. Yeah. So I just got to stand there between the two of them and just listen to them just back and forth and talk to each other and it's it was immediately clear that the reason they're so good with each other is because they actually like each other they're actually friends and you know they got along so well and before if you know i know we're a little over but you know one quick story about that so i met him and talking back and forth and uh uh jason cannot stop joking (laughs) He did not stop joking the entire time. He also didn't stop moving. He was very, like, very frenetic and very just moving. And uh, he starts telling me about, he's like, hey, you know, there's a version of this coming out with an action figure. And I'm like, yeah, the Tom Atkins action figure. He goes, no, 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 not that one. And he's like, there's a version of it coming out with a Jill Whitlow action figure. (laughs) And and she looks at him like, what the hell are you talking about? (laughs) And she's like, and she's got this look like, I don't like where this is going. And he goes, yeah, yeah, but only it comes with a bicycle pump and you have to blow it up with its life size and she's like oh my god you can, you didn't just say that and he's like yeah and i i jumped right in i'm like well you know what the best part about that is and they both look at me like like okay you know and i'm like the best part about that is moving forward you can go to a completely different type of convention you know it just opens up a completely different world of conventions having something like that on your you know resume and uh and uh she laughs and like yeah you know and uh maybe you know not so many nerds with sweaty hands Uh. and i go no no there's still going to be people with sweaty (laughs) hands it's just it's it's sweaty for a completely different reason so on the bottom of her autograph (sighs) to me it says be careful of men with sweaty hands (laughs) that's hilarious so yep. I met Jason Lively with Tom Atkins. It was those two guys together. Oh, nice. And this is really before the resurgence of Night of the Creeps kind of happened, before they even started, mm-hmm. re- before the re-release, you know, the director's cut and all that stuff. Nice. And it was uh, Texas Frightmare, and they had everybody from all the Romero movies there. And then off in the corner, they were going to have nice. Tom Atkins and Jason Lively. And they didn't bring... Anything to sign from Night of the Creeps because there wasn't anything. And the people that were running it was like, are you out of your minds? And they're like, you mean people still like this movie? (laughs) They're like, are you kidding? So they actually went and took a copy of the movie and played it and took some still shots, printed them off on on photo paper and gave them to them so they'd have something to sign for people. And that's one of the things I got. Amazing. And my story with Tom Atkins was... uh, Man, I've got. Who cares how long this episode is? We'll we'll talk. <laughs> this was the. They had found a uh, an original print of Night of the Living Dead that was on like nice. sixty mil or something. I mean, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, and they were actually going to show it, and at a theater in Texas mm-hmm. with Romero and everybody there. Now this isn't where wow, this isn't cool. where they were going to show it, and Romero and everybody standing up front. They were sitting in the seats, mm-hmm. and me nice. and my buddy uh, David Foster, which he's probably listening, he uh, he's the biggest Romero fan. So this was like his Romero Palooza. I mean, everybody from every freaking movie was there, and um, so we we go to the theater and watch this movie, Night of the Living Dead. And right across from us is D. Wallace, Malcolm McDowell, George Romero, then everybody else that's <laughs> that's involved in these flicks are all sitting there, and we're just in hog heaven. On the way out, there was an after party that we were supposed mm-hmm. to go to, and we didn't know. We're, we're in Texas. I mean, I'm, we're from Tennessee. We don't know the first thing about Texas. So we're trying to find somebody and say, how do we get to this other location? Because we don't know where we're at. We found the theater somehow. And we saw Ken Foray. And, hey, nice. hey, Ken, I said, you know, we're big fans. I said, but we're supposed to go to this after party thing. He's like, oh, yeah. He said, we're supposed to go there, too. He said, I'll tell you what, y'all just follow me. And so here we are driving down the road following Ken Foray <laughs> to this party. <laughs> 
And perfect person to follow because oh. no way you're going to lose him in a crowd. Exactly. You're never going to lose Ken yeah. Foray in a crowd. And uh, I can go on and on about that story. But what it come down to is I went to the restroom <laughs> at the party. And out in the lobby mm-hmm. was Tom Atkins. He goes, uh, hey, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find a John. <laughs> I'm like, hey, okay, it's it's right over here. And he says, uh, I, I'm Tom, by the way. I said, yeah, I, I know who you are, man. I said, you're one of the coolest people ever. He's like, oh, so you know who I am. I was like, yeah. He said, what's your name, Scout? And I, I told him my name was Rick. He's like, uh got a pretty good accent there. He said, where are you from? And I told him, Tennessee. So the rest of the whole time that we were there, I would walk by, and he'd call me Ricky Bobby. <laughs> hey, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Appreciate your help nice, the other night. Nice. So, But he's that person that you you wonder how much of it is the character and how much of yeah. it is real. He, he has a part of that in him already definitely and uh just super cool yeah. man super cool and and i just i love that that whole memory and and jason lively like you said they were cracking up with each other and and it was just fantastic so but yeah man all, nice. all you folks listening you got to check this movie out it's a ton of fun can't recommend it enough we may try to get together and do monster squad if you're up for that we should yeah absolutely yeah, i'm up well Definitely. Well, man, I totally appreciate you coming on. This has been a blast. I'm sure that we could talk for another four or five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. We, it, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and, and so and, far, uh, it hasn't messed up on us. So, uh... <laughs> No, no, yeah, everything, I mean, this is my first time doing this, so we still have plenty of time for me to stupid at it. So I could stupid <laughs> it before we're done here, but uh, I'm, my fingers are crossed. Oh. Well, man, I appreciate you hanging out with me. No problem, no problem. Just, I got one thing to say before we go, though. Yeah. Detective Thriller. All right. Folks, we will see you later on. Adios. 